Hi everyone. Firstly, we at the Digital Wizzo team would like to say thank you for purchasing this annual budget tool. We really appreciate your support. In this video, we are going to be diving into the details of the different features and options of this budget. Firstly, we are going to be looking at the budgeting tool, which you can use to keep track of all your income and expenses, and which also gives you a large set of options, so you can choose how you budget. Secondly, we will look at the calendar tool which gives you that additional time-based view of all your time-based payments. For example, your income, your bulk payments and your debt payments can all be visualized here. And lastly, we will look at the debt payoff tracker which again is its own independent tool and which will allow you to get a detailed plan on how to pay off your debt in the most effective way. By the end of this video, you will have a comprehensive understanding of how to use our spreadsheet to manage your finances and we trust that you will have found it to be easy and intuitive to use. Okay, so getting started. So when you open the spreadsheet, you'll find yourself on this README page, and there are a few key components that I'd like to mention while we're here. Firstly, at the top of the page, you'll see the navigation bar, and this allows you to easily and conveniently navigate to the different sections of the spreadsheet. You'll see all the links to the sections at the top, and when you click on one, it'll take you to that section. You'll also see that the navigation bar is dynamic, which means that depending on where you are, you have different options available to you. To get back to the README page, you can click Get Started. Underneath that, you have the quick guides to all the tools in the spreadsheet. So you have a quick guide to the annual and monthly budget tool, another one to the bill calendar, and another one to the debt payoff tracker. These are designed to be easy to digest and to provide a quick reference should you have any questions about the features of these tools. Lastly, I would also like to point out the option to collapse the toolbar in Google Sheets itself. By just clicking this button, you can open up more real estate on your screen while you do your budgeting. Now I'm going to navigate to the Envelopes tab. This is really where your budgeting starts. The envelopes are the categories of how you want to organise your finances. For example, under income, I have my salary coming in, I have my partner's salary, and then I have my rental income. For expenses, we have defined groceries, dining out, medical aid, insurance, and gym. For bills, we have rent, water, and Wi-Fi. Under savings, we have an emergency fund and vacation envelope, and then, under debt, we have our credit card and personal loan. But of course, you can customise these to whatever you want. Then you'll find that once you've chosen your envelopes, they will carry over to the different monthly tabs. So if we go to the first month, you'll see that for each tab, the envelopes have been populated. And the same is true for the second month. And in this way, consistency is going to be maintained across the different months. Now we can begin inputting the amounts. So for salary, we will budget $4,500, and we will input that we have received our salary. Our partner's salary, let's say, is $4,800, and we also received that this month. Then, let's say that you are expecting $1,200 in rental income. But we've only received half of that so far. After inputting the data, you can see the analytics on the right-hand side update, and there's a variety of analytics for every single category, so for income, for expenses, for bills, etc., for example, you can measure your progress by looking at the budget versus the activity. You can see which income is the highest and the lowest. You can look at a breakdown of the different envelopes by share, as well as get an overview of those different envelopes. And then you can also see your remaining income. Now, the remaining income is a valuable way to do zero-based budgeting, because as you allocate an amount to expenses, bills, savings and debt, you'll see how much income you have remaining for that month. And so, in this way, you can make sure that each dollar has its own job. In addition to that, I'd also like to mention that the graphs are dynamic. So you can choose what information to display. For example, you can display activity versus budget. Or you can reorder information based on your preference. And I'd also like to indicate how we input expenses information. So if we go down to the Expenses tab, we'll see that the envelopes have been populated and we can immediately add our budgeted amounts. So let's say for groceries, we budget $1,500 this month. For dining out, $150 for medical aid, 
$1,000, for insurance, $600, and lastly, $100, for our gym membership. You'll see that once we input the budgeted amounts, the analytics are going to update for the budget. But in order to add expenses activity, you're going to need to add transactions, and you navigate to the Transactions tab either through the link in the navigation bar or through the link in the Expenses tab itself. Then, once you're at the Transactions log, you'll see that you have space for thousands of transactions that allow you to keep a very granular track of all your transactions for each month. So let's say you want to add a transaction for January. You'll input the date of the transaction, the type of the transaction, the recipient, and the amount. And we also can make a note of ourselves on what we bought. Then, let's also add another transaction for our gym membership. So now as we have our transactions, we'll see the activity reflected in the expenses. And we can understand what our expenses look like for this month. Lastly, I'd also like to point out that, in the Transactions tab, you are able to sort and filter your transactions using the links in the log itself. And in this way, you can organise information based on how you need it. That is a fairly comprehensive overview of how these budgeting tabs work. But you also have a few additional options to customise how you want to budget. These additional options are going to be available in the Envelopes tab, so we're going to navigate there now. And you'll see two settings here. Firstly, a setting to activate monthly income rollover, and then secondly, a setting to change the budgeting cycle. I'm going to start by discussing the income rollover feature. This allows any available or remaining income in a month to carry over to the next month. So, to activate it, you would check the box, and then, let's say we go to February, you'll see that any available remaining income from January is now going to roll over to February and you'll see that the rollover setting is shown to be active over here as well. In addition, in all the tabs, the rollover setting will also be indicated to be active. As a result, the remaining income for this month is going to be a combination of the income for February plus any remaining income from January. You will notice that as I add additional income, it will be combined with the rolled over income and be reflected here. And why I'm going to move on to the second setting available to you in the Envelopes tab, the Budgeting Cycle. And this is going to allow you to control the period by which you want to budget. So let's say you get your paycheck on the 15th of every month. Then you would change the setting to reflect that, and this will then update across the spreadsheet. So in January, this is going to be the period of capture. Then in February, this is also the period of capture and so on. This will flow across all the different months as well as to the annual report. So using this setting, you are able to budget according to your personal situation and flow of income. And that's going to bring me to the last tab of the monthly budgeting tool, which is the annual report. But before I navigate there, I am just going to go back to the envelopes tab and set the budgeting cycle to the default setting and also disable the active monthly income rollover. Now that is done, I'm going to go to the annual report. In this tab, you can see the detailed yearly review of all your finances. So, for example, how much income did you earn in the year? What were your yearly expenses? What were your bills, savings and debt, etc.? You can also look at your yearly breakdown, disaggregated by the different envelopes, as well as in a time-based manner. So, for example, you can see your income month by month. Finally, there is a very granular table that shows the breakdown of your monthly spending and income for all the different categories both in terms of your budget and in terms of your actual activity. And this concludes the last tab of the monthly budgeting tool. I hope you have found the tutorial helpful so far. I am now going to be moving over to the next tool in the spreadsheet, which is the bill calendar. The calendar tool allows you to track your recurring payments. So these would be your incomes, your bills and your debts in a time-based view. Firstly, I will point out that there is a date input area at the top of the spreadsheet which allows you to filter information based on the time period. Then if we scroll down we will see the main data input area for your payments. When you want to track something, you would set the date 
at which the payment happens, the name of your payment as well as the amount. And then, once you have input this information, you will see it being displayed on your calendar. Furthermore, we have added the functionality to make recurring payments very easy. All you need to do is choose the period by which the payment will repeat. So, for example, maybe you want to record a monthly payment, you would choose the appropriate setting from the drop-down menu, and the payment cycle will update on the calendar. And of course it is a similar process for the bills and debt payments. But I will add a couple of examples here to demonstrate. As you see, it is now all reflected on your calendar, and you can see what is coming up for each month. And now that you are comfortable using the calendar tool, we can move on to the final tool in the spreadsheet, the Debt Payoff Tracker. Before using the Debt Payoff Tracker, there are a few key things that are important to note. Firstly, this payoff tracker is based on the debt snowball method. In this method, you approach your debt payments by paying off the debt with the lowest balance first. Once that debt is paid, you focus your efforts on paying off the debt with the next lowest balance. The next thing to know is that you will need to set a start date for when to begin your payments. You can find this setting in the top left. Once you have set a starting date, you can begin inputting your personal information. For each debt, there are four fields to fill out. First, you will write out the name of your debt. Then you will fill out the current balance, the minimum payment you need to make each month, and lastly, the annual interest rate. Once you have filled out all your debts, you will see that they will be reorganized on the right-hand side so that the debts with the lowest balance are prioritized. The spreadsheet will also begin populating the details of your payment plan. In this tab, you can now see a summary on what you have left to pay, the projected payoff period, the amount of interest that you need to pay, and finally, the date where you can expect to be debt-free. Now, while this is a summary of the payment plan, the details are going to be in the Payment Details tab. In this tab, there will be a monthly breakdown of payments for each debt. We know this is a lot of information displayed on the screen, but it is easy to follow once you go over it. Firstly, you can see the date. It starts based on the payment date you set in the previous tab. In addition, you can see the minimum payments, the balance at the end of each month, as well as the interest you would pay for that month. The final bits of information are the projected payment, the rollover, and the actual payment. And, I would like to go over these last three items in a bit more depth. The projected payment is a combination of the minimum payment and any rollover for that month. You can consider this to be the default payment you would need to make in a month. Now, what is rollover? Rollover occurs when you have finished paying off one of your debts. When a debt has been paid off, you can take its minimum payment and use it towards another debt. In this example, we can see that we finish paying off our credit card debt in June 2024. This means that we now have an extra $200 to put towards our next lowest debt, which in this case is our personal loan. And you can see here that this indeed happens. From June 2024, we are now rolling over an extra $200 for our personal loan. And this rollover pattern will continue and build up until all our debts are paid off. You should now be able to see some of the reasoning behind the phrase debt snowball. Finally, the actual payment is the final amount you would pay for that month. This will usually be the projected payment, but it can change if you choose to log additional amounts in the debt payments log. Let's do this now. For example, let's say that for a certain month I have extra money and I want to make a payment that is larger than the projected payment. In this scenario, I would go to the debt payment log and record that amount. Then, once I have filled it out, I can go back to the Payment Details tab and I will see that my custom payment is now reflecting as the payment for that month. However, please note that your custom payment will need to be larger than the projected payment in order for it to be reflected here. We hope this makes sense. As your projected payment is the minimum you would need to meet, you can only increase your amount for that month, not pay a lower amount.
Then the last feature I would like to point out now are the progress trackers on the side. These allow you to mark off when you make a payment for that month. You just click them to make your progress update. Before concluding the tutorial, I would also like to mention some optional features that have been added to this debt tracker. Firstly, if you go to the input tab, at the top, you will see an option for an extra monthly amount. This provides a broad way to add an extra fixed amount to your debt payments. And it is important to note that this fixed amount will be applied consistently to all months. The usefulness of this feature is that it allows you to make rough changes to your payoff plan and see how much faster you would become debt-free by contributing a bit extra. Finally, the last extra feature that needs to be mentioned are the debt snowflakes. These are extra payments you can make per month if you have left over money that month and it will update the payment plan for you. This is similar to the debt payments log, but it is a faster way to add additional amounts to your payoff plan. However, it offers less flexibility than actually recording the transaction. And now that brings me to the end of this tutorial. We trust that you found this helpful. We had a lot of fun putting it together and, if you do have any other questions, please contact our team and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks again and wishing you all the best with your finances.